And this is the Coach's Show with head coach Shannon Courier from the Concordia St. Paul Golden Bears. Welcome to the Coach's Show. Wally Langfellow with you as usual. And uh, Coach, uh, coming off the loss to Winona State, you knew you had to correct some things. Apparently you did. You had a 24-6 to win, a convincing win over Upper Iowa. Um, give me the, uh, the whys and why nots of what happened on Saturday, this past Saturday in the win over Upper Iowa. Well, we, we did get better, <clears throat> excuse me. But at the same time, you know, Upper Iowa is not Winona State either. Um, we're just focused on our own improvement. I think we did a lot better job at perimeter blocking. Uh, you know, Mason Van Zeeland had a really good day uh, catching the ball, but also blocking on the perimeter. Um, so we made some improvements there. Uh, we ran the ball a little bit better, of course. And uh, defensively, we played great. You know, we, we really stifled them on defense. And uh, I just think the week of practice and really pushing the guys and kind of seeing where we were um, after the Winona game, it gave us a chance to kind of move on from there and, and try to start making corrections from what we saw that first game. So, you know, we're still a work in progress, but we definitely uh, it was nice to get a win and, and now continue to work and make improvements, even though, you know, the, the win happened. We still want to always be able to, I guess, not let the circumstances dictate our behaviors. So regardless of win or lose, you know, we have to come at each day trying to get better um, the best way we can. Uh, Andrew Ignarski, uh, a big part of that defensive effort. Um, as you mentioned, he had, what, three sacks and, and uh, forced some fumble. I mean, what, what kind of game is, did he have and, and what kind of player is he? Andrew just defines the whole acronym we talked about being red here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, being relentless, enthusiastic, and just has a strong desire to be great. He puts a lot of time in his preparation. Um, you know, he did miss a workout all summer long. I guess there's one day he went to his sister's wedding. Other than that, though, the kid's been at everything um, ever since he's been here. Uh, he's in his third year playing, and uh, he's just continued to grow and, and get better. Um, his first year redshirted, you know, trying to break him from some of his high school habits of, of his eyes in the wrong place, that sort of thing. And he's just uh, become a great student of the game, spends a lot of time watching video. And he had three and a half sacks, 10 tackles, uh, six solo tackles, a forced fumble, recover fumble, um, and a bunch of tackles for a loss, too. So just a really phenomenal day statistically. And of those sacks, only one was an actual blitz. The other times were add-ons, add like he recognized that the running back was in protection. He had a chance to make a play. He did. Uh, so just a real savvy uh, play by Andrew. We're excited that. You know, he had such a great game. Well, not only was it a great game that you recognized, but he recognized by the conference he was the NSIC uh, Defensive Player of the Week. And I know that, you know, you're not about getting individual awards, but it is a big deal when you have a player earn that honor, isn't it? Absolutely. We want to have guys that perform as well as anybody in the league. We want to have the best players in the league on our team. Uh, so when our, our guys do get recognized conference-wide, that means a lot. Uh, it certainly helps their status too and their um, their chance of being all conference and those sort of things. So I think, you know, typically teams that win have those sort of players. So, you know, there's a lot of reasons for um, our players being recognized and you know, we have a lot of guys that work hard. So it's really nice when our own kids get recognized um, conference wide or national wide. And uh, he definitely earned it last weekend. What does it mean for your team's confidence to bounce back from the loss to Winona? and have the kind of game you had. And as you said, Upper Iowa was not Winona. We all understand that. Yeah. But you still line up. You still got to play the game. It, it must have been a, a good feeling for confidence-wise for your squad. Absolutely. I mean, every game is is very challenging in this league. Uh, that's been proven in the past. I mean, it doesn't matter who we're playing. You know, we have a chance to win. That The other team has a chance to beat us. And we have to show up every week and put the ball in the end zone and keep them out. Um, so it means a lot just because that's the ultimate goal, of course. And it's a lot easier than to you know, push the players harder after a win because everybody's in a good mood. So you can up the ante, if you will, in terms of what you expect on a practice field. And you can get them to pay attention to details a bit more. I think um, the words maybe matter more. Uh, they, lay, they pay attention more so. So I think it's a lot easier to grow when you're, when you're successful. Um, you know, the failures certainly show all, show you what you're not doing well, and that's beneficial for growth too. But it's more fun, I guess, to win, and therefore, you know, 
we get better and join the, the process more so. Um, and it's nice to see some things come together successfully. It just it helps guys gain momentum and it's a sport of momentum. And you can use successes and stack those on top of one another to gain more success. So it, there's a lot of reasons for um, to win the game. And, and it was it was a really good feeling after Saturday's win. All right. Um, talk about your offense, because I know your, your main concern was what your offensive line wasn't able to do in Winona. And, and again, the competition is different, but you still have to do what your job is. And it seems to me, based on what I've seen and people I've talked to, your offensive line took a big step forward. It did. You know, it's still not to where we want it to be. Um, I think there's a lot more left in the tank for that group. Um, the backs ran really well, and uh, the quarterback was 20 of 27. I mean, that's one of the best days we've had a quarterback perform. A 75% completion percentage, 250 yards, two touchdowns. Um, you know, like I said, Mason played really well. Our slot receivers played really well. Um, and the whole line did do better, but we still left some things on the table. We had five penalties. You know, we had a couple calls that brought back a first down and one touchdown because of a, a holding call. You know, so as as good as it was to make some steps, we still are pushing hard because we expect more yet, you know, from that group. Um, anything defensively that you think needs to be better yet? Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we busted a coverage, I guess, is why they scored the seven points they did. You know, we're pretty disappointed. We had the, the shutout going, and then after a, a, a fake punt, or not a fake punt, but a, I guess a botch protection on our end, we had a player not – uh, changed an assignment on some movement on their punt block team. And they blocked a punt. That gave them a short porch. And then, you know, with us blowing the coverage in the in the end zone, they got a, a pass completed on us. You know, so we don't want to have those things happen. You know, we weren't really sound with our, um, I guess, our responsibilities in the defensive line. Uh, sometimes the defensive end has a dive. Sometimes he's got the quarterback. Um, so we have to be consistent with our assignments because what that player does dictates – how things can go up. So if the defensive end fails to, you know, I guess uh, defend the quarterback, the quarterback could be making a big play. So I think we just have to be more assignment um, aware. And uh, we're going to play, you know, another young man, Brad Walker, this week at the defense line. He's a big kid with a lot of potential, just trying to, I guess, continue to develop depth there. We have an injury or two as well. We're overcoming at the defense line spot. Um, we played less players in both the offense and defense line this past week, which probably helped us uh, because we saw what guys can do in that first game. And that has dictated like who's playing more now. Um, I think we'll continue to find roles for different players and utilize them, you know, to do, have them do things they do well and uh, things that some guys aren't able to do well, then obviously not put them in those situations. So I think we're just still trying to find that continuity and learn about what, um, type of skill sets different players have you know from watching games and uh, I think with that being said we're going to continue to make progress all right we're going to take a break now when we come back uh, we'll hear from Mason Van Zielen and Andrew Ignarski and then you and I will talk again later in the show and we'll talk all about this week's opponent Sioux Falls you are listening to the coaches show right here on EM 1440 back with more after this timeout stay with us <laughs> 